All right, what's up my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast real estate tip where every single week I come to you delivering different tips, tactics, and strategies to help you get shit done inside your real estate business and help ensure that you're going out there and crushing and dominating your real estate goals. All right, so today I'm here to talk to you guys about the top 10 most effective ways to go out there and make now immediate money inside your real estate business. So if you want to go out there and immediately turn things around or immediately scale your business, get more clients, get more closings, get more commission checks, get more revenue in your real estate business. Today, we're going to cover those in, in specific to this market. You know, one of the things that's really important to understand and know, and I don't care if you're a realtor, team leader, brokerage owner, what level that you're at, this applies to all of us. If you want to be able to continue to grow and scale and thrive, regardless of what's going on with the market. And you want to do this for you know the longevity of your career. You have to have the ability to read the markets. You have to have the ability to change, shift, and adapt based on the different markets. And a lot of people right now that are just getting their butts kicked in this market, it's because they haven't adapted accordingly. Look, 2012 through middle of 2022, longest bull market in recorded history, longest uh, economic expansion, longest real estate expansion in the United States recorded history. So since 1776, never seen anything like that. Well, a lot of people are still doing the same shit that they did in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, maybe even early 2022 before things really started to change. Well, they're, and their business is just falling, just dropping off. And they're just waiting and hoping things are going to turn around. And then they start blaming things like, oh, my business is down because of the market. No, your business is down because you haven't adapted accordingly with the times that we are in. We are now amongst the most unaffordable time or close to the most unaffordable real estate market that we've ever experienced or seen, at least here in the United States. It's a, hands down the most unaffordable time to be alive as a US citizen. And we're amongst the most competitive real estate landscape that we have ever seen. Meaning that, you know, looking at the number of listings, the number of closings versus the number of active agents, we've never seen this quite of a competitive landscape. So we got to shift up our strategy. Otherwise, you are going to experience massive resistance. And according to NAR, at least for 2023, the average realtor, average team, average brokerages business is down 40% from the previous year. Now, that is just when I see that stat, I'm like, okay, those are just a bunch of people that have not shifted, that have not adapted their strategies and their, their overall approach to the overall market. But we're going to get you covered to make sure that you're rocking and rolling after this podcast today. You'll know exactly what to do to go out there and change this stuff around You know, with that. Then I just heard from Fox News that 45% of real estate agents cannot afford their office dues. Now, what this could mean is this might end up being the year of the mass exodus of our industry. Like meaning, okay, those that are struggling, those that, you know, like just those that can't make it, they just end up giving up their real estate license, go out there and get other jobs. And then that way it might help solve this competitive issue where then it just kind of works its way out. But we'll see, at least as of right now, we know that we're in this competitive landscape. That does not mean that your business needs to be down. If your business is down, that is a choice that you are making. And, and, and that's a choice that you're not choosing to pivot and adapt. And look, I understand that before listening or watching this podcast, maybe you didn't know what to do. But after this podcast, if you don't make the shifts and changes, then from there, it's a conscious choice as to why your business is down. Okay, so one thing I want you to um, um, understand before we get into the actual 10 actual strategies here is that you got to understand timeline. Right. So the other, this was a couple months ago. I'm having a conversation with an agent that was struggling that reached out to me for some help. Um, and I was like, okay, well, what are you doing right now? What are you focusing on right now? And she tells me, um, I'm building up my organic social media and I'm building up my YouTube channel. And I'm like, look, those things are great. I love those things. I do those things too. Like those things are awesome. But then I asked her because I knew that she was experiencing some pain. I asked her, I'm like, how long can you go without a commission check? before like you're in some deep trouble, like you're going to, you know, like in a really tough spot, like you're in trouble. We all know what that, you know, what, what our, what our burn rate is, is what it's called. You know, like how much money do you have, you know, saved up? How long can you go without a commission check before you're like SOL, right? Um, and she tells me four months. So then I say to her, I'm like, okay, look, YouTube and, and all that social media stuff that you're doing is amazing. And, and again, I do those things too. And I'm not saying to not, uh, not or to abandon those things. However, if you do all those things right, if you nail those precisely and you don't screw up and you do everything right, we're talking about nine months before you're going to start seeing some consistent uh, commissions 
you know, coming in from those, like you might get lucky and, 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 you know, have a month where you get some clothes, but it's going to be about nine months before you start seeing a consistent flow from those things. So I'm like, you know, the issue is here is you're going to be out of money and in a huge painful situation before those things pay off. So again, I'm not saying to abandon those things, but what I am saying is we need to get some immediate money-making activities in place right now that you are, that are kind of your primary focus. Then you can work on these other things as kind of your back end side hustle, but these are, you got to be a primary focus so we can make sure you're getting paid before the next four months. So then with that being said, when I say now immediate money, now immediate clients, now immediate money, of course, there's nothing that is super immediate in real estate. So how I define this is what is leading to me getting, like what activities can I do today that's going to lead to me getting a commission check in my bank account in the next 90 to worst case, 120 days, right? Then we got our long-term strategies like, okay, like I love Google pay-per-click or, or not so much Google pay-per-click. I mean, I, you know, so it's okay. You know, for, for me, I prefer, you know, pay Facebook ads. Um, but like, okay, those things are great. But I also know and understand that that type of a lead source is in my CRM for 6.7 months before they become a client. So it's about a nine to 10 month average, you know, uh, uh, span of time before I see a paycheck. So we got to know what the timeline is. This is a problem that so many people have is we are focusing on the wrong things based on what our situation is with inside of our career. You know, right? So we got like, if you need money now and you want to scale this fast, like a lot of people that I'm having conversations with that are reaching out to me for my free coaching calls that I offer here on this podcast, you know, they're focusing on things where I'm like, dude, that's really like, at least as of the time of me recording this is January 6th. So I'm like, dude, that is your 2025 plan more than your 2024 plan. Like we got to do some things that are scaling up your 2024 plan. Yeah. Like, okay. You want to make 250 grand this year. All the things that you're doing might make you 20 grand this year. Right. But those are really, it's going to, the, the run rate on that timeline is too long to be able to have the impact that you need to have for 2024. So we got to pay attention to that. Okay. So I want to go into one more thing before I get into these 10 things. But before I do that, just in case. Look, if you are a real estate agent, you are a team leader, you are a brokerage owner, and maybe your business is down, maybe it's stagnant, maybe it's grown, but just not at the pace that you want it to. It's like you're operating down here, but you know your full potential is way up here, and you just do not know exactly what to do to get you from where you're at to where you want to go. If that is you, I invite you to schedule a 100% free. 100% zero pressure coaching call with me personally. This is going to be a one hour long call on Zoom together with me and you. And we're going to break down on this call where your business is currently at, what your 12 month goals are, what your long term goals and visions are, which is important. All of these, you know, we got to make sure that all of these align. Then from there, what you're currently doing, what your biggest obstacles are that you are experiencing. Then from there, I'm going to map out while we're on this coaching call, what exactly what to do to get from where you're at, not just to making sure your 12 month goals are a reality, but also to ensure that you're on track and hit that target of making your long-term vision a reality. So I'm going to walk you through, Hey, if we were to switch shoes and if I were you, here's exactly what I would do to get you from where you're at to where you want to go in the quickest, most effective, efficient, profitable manner possible. So if you want to take advantage of this 100% free coaching call that I can't do forever, but I'm trying to do as many of these as I possibly can. I'm doing about three, you know, blocking about three hours every day right now to be able to support you guys, help you guys out. Cause I know so many of you are struggling and look, I don't want you guys to struggle. Right. So there's no reason that you need to be struggling. I'm giving you the lifeline right now. It's like you're drowning in quicksand. Yeah. Right. I see you. I'm throwing you the rope. I just need you to grab that rope so I can pull you out. Now, if you don't grab the rope and you, and you choose to drown yourself, okay, that's on you. But right now I'm giving you that rope. I will help you. I got your back. I 100% promise you, we will get you dialed in where when you leave this call, you will have full clarity on exactly what to do. Now, full disclosure, the very end of this call, we're going to spend about 50 minutes going through all of that. Last 10 minutes, yeah, I'm going to walk through you know, what my coaching program is, what it entails, and see if it's a possible fit for you. And look, if it is cool, if not, hey, that's okay too. We can still be friends. I promise you, have my word, that this will still be massively power coaching call for you. The, the point of these coaching calls, these free coaching calls, is not to sell you on my coaching. If it's for you, great. And it's just some extra support that I can provide for you and, and, and you know, ensure we get you there and you know, support you on a daily basis every step of the way. If it's something that you want, but you can go out there and execute on this plan on your own too, right? Like, I'm not going to beg you to whip out your credit card. I'm not going to make you feel guilty. I'm not going to hard pressure you. It's for you. Cool. If not, uh, that's okay too. Everything I do, zero pressure. So if you want to schedule this, 
go to www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. Okay, so before I get into the actual 10 steps, one thing that are the 10 strategies here, one thing that's really important to understand, and this is really the secret of sales, if you will, is sales is all about pain and pleasure. People are experiencing a pain with their current situation. They want out of that pain and they want to get to pleasure. So, so many of you, and the reason why I say so many of you and why I'm so uh, uh, confident in this statement is because I hear this every single day from about 50 you know, realtors and team leaders and broker owners reaching out to me. Um, um, and whether it be through email, the podcast, or what just conversations, you know, I live, eat and breathe real estate. It's all I do and all I've done for 20 years now, you know, um, but so many are like, Hey man, like, dude, I, I'm doing the work and I'm having all these conversations, but like, nobody really wants to buy and sell. Yeah. Right. Like they're just, people aren't wanting to buy and sell. Okay. You are then targeting people with low pain. That's all that this is. You are just targeting the wrong people. You got the wrong strategy for the market that we are in. This is not a market right now about those that want to buy or sell. This is a market for those that need to buy and sell. When we've eliminated 50% plus of human beings that would normally be able to acquire and participate in the real estate market that now can't because of the unaffordability issue of real estate plus the unaffordability issue of life, right? We need to be laser targeted. We got to be snipers. Like the sniper scope can't be shotgunning shit out. We got to be sniper scoping. This is why things like circle prospecting, are, are you're just going to shit the bed on and not do, you know, they're going to be ineffective right now for you in this given market. Maybe they work great in, you know, 2018, 2019, you know, whatever previous years, but they're not going to work right now. You're going to get a low yield on your overall return for your time and energy on things like that. We need to be laser focused on those that have the deepest need. So we got to assess this. Okay. Who is having, so speaking of real estate, who is having the deepest pain with their current real estate situation? Right. Um, that I can then get them out of that pain and get them to the pleasure that they want. Cause that is our job as real estate professionals is to articulate to identify who's experiencing the pain and the most pain and articulate that we're the best guide to get them from that pain to that pleasure that they want. Right. That that is our like if you grasp this, if you understand this, you will become a freaking master at sales for the whole rest of your life. And again, I don't care if you're focused on buyers, sellers, agent recruiting, it's all the same. So like my agent recruiting right now, I'm like, okay, who's experiencing the most pain? You know, okay, like I'm going after a lot of the agents, like to join, you know, my, like you say, it's my real estate team. It's like, okay, like I know those that are making between one and three million a year. Like, dude, they're struggling, they're experiencing a lot of pain, you know. Um, um, and those are people that like need move, need better guidance, need better leadership, need better opportunities. And then, bam, it's like fishing with dynamite going after that because like they need pain and their current leadership in their current environment is, isn't providing that for them. And then, boom, now, even though people be like, oh, well, you know, they're not doing the work, okay. Well, maybe they just don't know what to do. There's no abundance or no shortage of, of brokers and teams that, that just don't give the proper guidance to their agents to show them what to do to go out there and create success, right? I mean, that's, you know, so, so they're, they're being let down. Okay, I cannot let them down. I can plug them in and boom. Now, for today's podcast, though, I'm going to speak specifically to buyers and sellers, though. But understanding that this principle applies to buyers, sellers, and agent recruits. So the more pain that they're experiencing, that then makes more urgency. And this is a market about urgency. We need to identify people that have the biggest urgency to go out there and take action right now, right? Um, so we can allocate the best use of our time. And that's what's going to lead to the most immediate money. You know, you got two-thirds of homeowners out there locked in at 4% or lesser interest rates. So they may want to sell, but they're not going to give up their 3% interest rate. You know, right. So, okay. So, um, so pain and pleasure equates to urgency, right? So just remember that, know that, make a note of that, ingrain that in your damn head, go get a tattoo of it on your body. So you never forget it. Just kidding about the tattoo part, but, um, okay. So now let's first start with listings. Okay. So, um, the first two that I'm going to share with you, the first two strategies are ones that have always been good. You're already aware of these are good. will always be good, but we got for sale by owners and we've got expires. Right. So for sale by owners and expires, and we don't necessarily know the pain that they're experiencing, but we know that they're experiencing some type of pain, some type of urgency because they've already raised their hand that they're, they're needing and wanting to sell their home and list their home on the marketplace. Right. So this is a great source, great niche. Now, a thing to be prepared about 
not to be fearful of, but to be prepared for. There's a difference. You know, I'm not saying this to plan a limiting belief and create fear so you don't go after these. Like I'm going like pretty, pretty much everything I'm sharing with you today. Like I'm targeting all of these right now, like very heavily, you know, um, um, and I'm not saying that you need to target all of these. You got to put things in context. Look, I got a large mega team. I've got, you know, 50, 50, you know, full-time, well, not quite 50 full-time agents, but I got a lot of people in my team that were, were collectively targeting, not everybody's targeting all 12 of these. Yeah, you might only need to go out there and target depending on your goals. Like if you just want to go out there and do a listing a week and go out there and make 40 grand a year, you might just be able to pick any two of these and, and go out there and, and, and do that depending upon, you know, how much, how many opportunities, like how big your market is. Right. Um, so if this and expires, though, these are going to be hyper competitive. So you're going to have a shit ton of other realtors in your market going after these sources as well. And that's not something to be fearful of, but we have to understand it. So then from there, the key there is you got to have a better process and your skill set has to be far greater than all those other agents going after those. So then this way, okay, like expires, okay, we're seeing 6% conversion rates, FISBOs, we're seeing about 10% conversion rates. When I say conversion rates on, on these strategies, I'm talking about conversation to listing taken, right, is, is what I mean by those conversion rates. So that way you, you have an accurate, you know, um, idea of what that means, right? Um, you know, um, but because the average realtor in our industry has low to no skill set. This stuff is still like fishing with dynamite. But if you're going to go after these sources and you do not identify the proven process and you don't dial in your skill set, like you don't know how to, you know, have the right pre-frame openers, you don't have the right tonality, you don't know how to have navigate effective conversations, like dude, you're going to have a very like you're going to have low conversion rates and you're going to have a very low like you're going to experience a lot of a lot of resistance that's unnecessary, right? And then you got to make sure that you have the right process, the right timeline and the right follow-up process, you know, to be able to maximize conversions with these. So those are kind of the keys to to knocking those out and nailing those. Okay, the next one here, so that's one and two. Number three here, so the next one is investors. So investors, there's really three different sub niches within these. You've got your long-term buy and holds, you know, your kind of typical investor that goes buy this, puts a tenant in for a year or two, you know, your long-term buy and holds. We got short-term vacation rentals, like your Airbnbs, your Verbos. And then we got, you know, your, your kind of like second homeowners, your snowbirds, your, you know, they don't, they don't necessarily rent it out, but it's a vacation home for them. Now, all three of these are really strong in this economic climate that we are in. When I say strong, meaning pain, meaning urgency. Let's look at long-term buy and holds, right? You got 10 evictions up 54% from pre-pandemic levels. So they're having a very difficult time collecting money and getting good tenants in there. And so, you know, evictions are skyrocketing because of the economic situation that people are going through, right? So then from there, we got rents coming down for the first time in a decade plus. We got cap, what's called cap rate compressions taking place. Then we got insurance rates. Like we all see it in our own properties where like insurance is just fucking going crazy, right? So insurance is going up. Taxes are going up. HOAs in a lot of cases are going up. Cost of maintenance and labor for repairs is going up. So dude, just pain, 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 right? Pain equals urgency. Um, so then from there, if they want to sell at or close to peak pricing, but do so before they either get into a negative cash flow territory or continue losing more money, now is the opportune time to do so. Now let's talk about short-term vacation rentals, right? So 50% uh, of these that were acquired required post-COVID, which means they all fucking bought wrong. Yeah, right? Like, well, at least half of these that exist, 1.3 million short-term vacation rentals throughout the United States, you know, 700,000 of them roughly bought wrong. You know, they can't transition those into long-term buy and holds. They bought them when oxy rates were like at 70 or 75%. Now that domestic travels dropped off of a cliff because it costs 20 bucks for a person to go to freaking Arby's or, you know, like just life has gotten so damn expensive, you know, right? Um, so domestic travels falling off a cliff. Now oxy rates are 52%. So it's just pain, 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 right? So if they want to sell at or close to peak pricing, but do so before they continue losing more money, now is an opportune time to do so. So just remember, I know I'm being very repetitive here, but I want you to remember the more pain, the more urgency. So we need to target and allocate our time and energy to who has the highest probability of looking to buy, sell, make a move at this given time. Okay, so then from there, we got these secondary homes. Right. Okay. Most of these people that own these secondary homes are boomers that are retired, that are on fixed incomes, um, cost of inflation, all of these things, all the other things that these investors are expensive too, but just cost of life, all of this is going up. Because a lot of people are like, oh, well, they paid cash. 
or they have a low mortgage. Why would they ever sell? I'm like, dude, taxes, insurance. You know, every time you go to the grocery store, you know, all of this stuff, it's just pain, 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 pain. A lot of people are not having to start making that decision on, okay, we can't have these two or three, you know, homes that we go travel. We got to pick a primary residence and stick and stay in that primary residence. So that is a great niche for now, immediate money. Um, now then let's go into NODs slash pay for closures, right? These are people 30 plus days behind on their mortgage payment. There's over 3 million of them right now throughout the United States. You got 84 mortgage, a million mortgage holders on single family real estate. You got 12 million HELOCs currently. Over 3% of those are in default status. So these are people that cannot afford their payments. They're, they're, they need to sell. They need to sell fast. Otherwise, their bad situation is going to get a hell of a lot worse because they're going to get foreclosed upon like they need our help. So that's another great niche. Right. Um, okay. So niche, the next niche um, um, or the next strategy is people going through divorce. You know, it's, it's a sad fact of life. But when economic times are challenging and people are you know, start to experience financial hardships, puts a lot of strain on marriages and divorces increase. So and then, OK, when people file for divorce or going through a divorce, the probability of them needing to sell and wanting to sell sooner than later is very, very high. You know, they're going to split the asset. They don't want to be under the same roof together, you know, right? Whatever. Like that's very, very high, right? So that is a great niche, you know, to go after great strategy with urgency. So those are the best overall. I know that that's kind of like eight niches you know, eight strategies, but, you know, I've, I put those into five because I put the three different investor groups all into one, you know? Um, okay. So now let's move to the buy side. Okay. So we got open houses. Like open houses are still effective. You just got to make sure that you're doing the right open houses, right? So like meaning... Okay, I'm going to identify like what is moving, what is in demand. It's kind of like that movie Field of Dreams, if you've ever seen that, like that baseball movie where they're like, oh, build it and they will come, right? So it's like do the open house on what is in demand. What are the neighborhoods? What's the subdivisions? What's the price points? What are the home features? Like what are the things that, that people that are actively buying right now in your market, what is in most demand? What do they want? So I'm not going to go out there and just do open houses on any given property. I'm going to be very specific where then again, I'm doing this, you know, doing this event where I have the highest probability of those that are able and willing to buy in this marketplace. You know, so like for me in my market, okay, I'm focused on when it comes to the buy side, 40 to 55 year old married couples. They're in peak income earning years. This is the last kind of move up purchase of their lifetime. You know, um, they have the income to do it. Yeah, right. They have a home that they already own, that they have the equity for the down payment. Like they're in the position to go out there and buy in this market. You know, young couples, it's tougher for them or young people or single people because of the affordability, at least in my market and a lot of your markets too. You know, they're kind of out of this market. You know, so, okay, like what do they want? What are the most in demand, you know, zip codes, cities, subdivisions, home features? Like I know for me, and I'm not saying that this is going to you know, translate to your market. You've got to study your market, know your market for this kind of stuff. But for my market, it's like, okay, I know that it's going to be in that, you know, 600 to you know, 900,000 hour price point. They want four plus bedrooms, three plus bathrooms, three plus car garages, you know, sparkling swimming pools, tricked out backyard. You know, they want zero deferred maintenance. So they want to move in badass property. You know, okay. And then I know the, the zip codes, the neighborhoods that are most demand. Okay. That is going to be where I'm hosting my open houses to get them to come in. Now with this, okay. You know, six years ago, that, that house, you know, six years ago, it was worth 350. Now today, maybe it's worth 800,000 or whatever the, you know, the numbers work out at okay six years ago i used to get 75 people through this open house now today man maybe i'm lucky to get 12 or 15. so this is where we got to make sure we have the right process and the right skill set because we got we can't waste opportunities anymore right like we got to be on our a game this is a market of the professional you know the the amateurs used to you know 2012 through middle 2022 you could be an amateur low level skill set, not treating your business as a business, kind of have this as a hobby and go out there and make six figures. Those days are done here and gone, right? Those that are getting punished are still operating as a hobby, operating as amateurs. It's the true professionals that are treating their business as a business, right? So they make sure they have the right strategies in place. You know, they make sure they have the right processes and systems. They're tracking their business, right? They're, you know, again, treating your business as a business, mastering the skill sets you need to master. So you convert these at a high level. Okay. So then the next one, for buyers um, is intent-based online leads. Like we're seeing a lot of big success with these, extremely high conversions with these. What do I mean by intent-based online leads, right? So, okay, like I'm not talking about Facebook or pay-per-click style here. Like those are disruptive. Nobody goes into Facebook to look at real estate. 
Like they go in there to you know be entertained. Somehow we caught, you know, kind of bait and switched them with our ad and then boom. And those are long-term, those are long-term nurture. We're talking immediate business, right? So we're talking about those, those platforms, you know, that are specific to real estate, like, okay, like Zillow. You know, right? Zillow, Realtor.com. I know a lot of you don't like these platforms, whatever. And I'm not saying that you got to do them. I'm just speaking the truth right now that they fucking work and they're getting good results. If you know what you are doing, if you do not know what you are doing and you do not know how to convert these, don't do it because you are going to get your ass kicked because of the, the cost per lead is so high with these sources. But if you know what you are doing, you can get a massive ROI. People are like, dude, is Zillow good? I'm like, hell yeah, Zillow's good. It's amazing. Like, right. But if you are if you are not in the right, if you don't have the right setup, the right situation, if you can't be reactive, you don't have the right skill set, you don't have the right process, like you are going to have low, low, low conversion rates. Um, and, and you're just not gonna make the ROI. Like you gotta make sure it's not Zillow that's the problem. You know, it's it's you don't know what you're doing that's the problem. But with these, okay, people are going like when you go to Zillow. And I'll use Zillow because I know there's other ones outside of Zillow, but Zillow is a juggernaut. So we all familiar with it. Okay. You go into Zillow, like you go there for a reason, right? You're like there to look at freaking homes. Then from there, when you inquire on something, okay, you know, you are, you, you're reaching out to a realtor, you know, right. But with a specific question or to schedule a showing, they've really replaced the mod. They're the modern day sign call. Yeah. Right. So, so again, you know, um, um, you know, high conversions and, and what we're talking about, high conversions, if you know what you're doing. But again, remember today, what we're talking about is the 10 ways to quickest now immediate money. So, okay, like with our Zillow leads, it's like, okay, on average, it's less than from lead inception to closing commission hand, it's less than four months. You know, a lot of times, I mean, a lot of times it's about a 30% conversion rate from lead to, you know, client to getting them under contract. So it's quick, you know, right, um, um, you know, from those. Okay. So now those were really going after brand new business sources. Now let's talk about your database and your CRM. So if you have a database, if you have a CRM, you know, there's going to be gold in there. You know, you got all these old leads. Maybe, maybe these leads that you haven't been nurturing, that you've been neglecting. I can promise you that there are leads in there. You know, one of the things I've done historically internally within my team in the leads department is, okay, before I, you know, set somebody off on getting new leads, it's like, okay, hey, I'm going to give you a bunch of old leads. You're going to call these two hours a day, Monday through Friday, you know, because they got to prove themselves that they're worth me investing in new leads for, you know, um, um, I've yet to have anybody that hasn't got a client within 30 days by going through that test. I've never had it. I've never seen it. Yeah. Right. So like, there's going to be gold in there, you know, but you got to play like we 2024 now is the year of what I'm calling the year of offense. Got to shift from defense to offense. What do I mean by that? Defense is being passive, waiting for deals to come to you, waiting for repeat referral business to come to you, waiting for people in your database to raise their hand, reach out, email you saying, oh, we're ready. You know, that's defense. That's passive. And that used to work when there was an abundance of low-hanging fruit. All that low-hanging fruit is dried the hell up. This is the year of offense. By offense, I mean, okay, every single day, you got to be asking yourself, what am I doing intentionally? What is my game plan intentionally to put damn deals together? Like, what am I doing? Now, you can play offense even with, you know, old leads in your database or inbound strategies. But again, we're not waiting down. We're just not nurturing them on drips and property alerts. And like that shit isn't going to get to get you high conversions. Like you need to be working those damn phones, um, following up aggressively and doing everything that you can to get the gold out of your system, right? To be able to set those appointments and turn these into opportunities. You're not waiting for opportunities to come to you. You're being proactive to put opportunities together. Um, okay, well, maybe you're like, well, dude, I don't have a database. I'm new. I don't have a database. I don't have, okay, like you, I mean, you can either go join a team, you know, um, um, or go to top producers in your market. I guarantee top producers, you know, they got an abundance of old leads that are not getting worked properly in their, their database. Ask them if you can kind of, you know, play ISA, if you will, in their database. Um, if you can start working those leads, anything that you procure and, and, and convert out of those, you know, you go work and you close and you just split those deals 50, 50, you know, Oh, well, Josh, I don't want to give up 50% of my income. Well, okay. Like, would you rather have, you know, five, you know, instead of 10 grand, would you rather have five grand, you know, or would you rather have zero? Right. So just give, I'm just planting seeds, you know, right. For ideas for you guys to go out there. Now, of course, the next thing is we've got our sphere of influence. You know, um, tap it into your sphere. Now, sphere is going to be down, right? So sphere, pat, like everything's down right now, right? Because again, we've just admitted and eliminated 50% of, of people that were, were able to buy three years ago and, and had, you know, would be normally selling and buying is just omitted from this marketplace. 
but we don't want to neglect our sphere of influence, our past clients. So we want to keep on to that because those referrals will be there. They'll be there. Um, and, and you want to keep that strong. And if you haven't been working that, I'd get on that too, you know, and, 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 you know, be working, working that angle. I wouldn't rely on that angle in this market, you know, um, but there, there's, you know, usually some now business there. Okay. The last one, I already mentioned this one. So I kind of jumped ahead here. Um, but if needed, you can join a team. Well, Josh, you're like, I don't have these Zillow leads. I don't have this stuff. Okay, cool. Like, go join a team that does, right? Like, like if you're in a bad position, you now immediate money. You know, it's like, okay, like in our Zillow department, um, um, when agents join that, like it's they're not uncommon at all that they have, you know, their first, first deal in a contract within about 30 days, 45 days, you know? So, okay. Like, again, what do you got to do to go out there and put food on the table, put deals together, keep things growing. And look, I know I'm not, you know, I'm not saying this, oh, good. Well, Josh, you're a team leader. Of course you want everybody to go join. No, I'm just saying, hey, it's an option. You got to assess your options. And sometimes we got to abandon ego. You know, right? Like some people aren't built to be rainmakers. The vast majority of our industry isn't built to be a rainmaker. Okay, then go join an organization where they have the rainmaker and then you can just service, you know, the, those leads if that's a situation that you need. You know, right? But at some point we got to have some self-awareness. You know, self-awareness is extremely important when it comes on our success journey, you know, um, of, of, you know, what we're good at, what we're not good at, what we're willing to do, what we're not willing to do. Cause you can be good at something and still not willing to do it, you know, um, um, you know, with that. Now I know that this stuff sounds like a lot, but don't, don't get overwhelmed by it. Like I said, you just, you know, can go out there and pick a couple of these things and just start targeting and hitting it hard. And then people are like, oh, well, Josh, it's so hard to reach out to Fizbo's or it's so hard to reach out to expires or call these investors, man, I got to spend, you know, two hours a day on the phone. Look, if, if, if you're not willing to spend two hours on the phone, right, um, um, going out there, having 50 conversations or 50 dials an hour, so 100 dials, 10 conversations in a two hour period of time to go out there and make 40 grand a month, like your, your priorities are off, man. You know, um, it just it, like it is not hard. And I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm not saying this to be a jerk, but we got to deal in the eyes and put things into perspective. Like if the hardest part of your day is sitting here, you know, on this phone, and just, you know, dialing people for, for, you know, or I wouldn't be on my phone. I'd be on a dialer, but, um, uh, uh, you know, for two, you know, for two hours, you know, a hundred dials, 10 conversations. And okay. With some of those, you're going to get some hangups. You're going to get some people that, you know, aren't so pleasant from time to time. Yeah. You'll get some of that from time to time, but if that's the hardest part of your day, but it gives you the ability to go out there and make 40 grand a month. And, and, and you think that that's so difficult. Right. Like the reality is, is you just allowed yourself to get soft. And, and again, I'm not saying this to be a jerk, man. I'm saying this because I truly care. Like this is not hard work. This is not difficult. I'm in an air conditioned office. I got cold water. You know, it's like there's people out there that have true hard jobs. There's people out there that have like, like this stuff is easy. We just got to get, we just got to retrain our minds, man. Like, you know, it's not that fucking difficult to go out there and do this stuff, you know? Um, so we just got to quit being entitled get our shit together, get the, get our perspective shift, our mindset shifted. And, you know, like, what would you have? What's harder? Struggling and not being able to pay your bills, not being able to sleep at night or, or you know, doing the actions that you got to take to go out there and create opportunities and a successful career for you and your family. Like, you just got to pick the hard that you want to experience. Okay, so in ending here, <clears throat> there are three most important things overall that you must dial in right now to shift and adapt. And this is going to apply to all of these strategies that I walked you through here. Now, overall, this isn't the three things, but I just want you to remember this. This is the, this is now a time of offense, not defense. So we got it. So just always asking yourself now, what am I doing in my business to intentionally put deals to create opportunities each and every single day when I'm working. Like, you know, not waiting for deals to fall on your lap. Oh, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to just do all these social media posts and, you know, I'm going to have people slide into my DMs and I'm just going to go viral. Okay, good luck with that, right? Um, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to plant limit release, but good luck with it. You know, um, um, those that we're seeing out there, oh, well, I see this lady on social media that's doing that. She's just crushing it. And you know, all her business just comes from DMS. Okay. Let's put things into context. Yeah. You know, that person that you're talking about, how long have they been doing it? How consistent have they been at it? How long did it take them to build up that funnel? You know? Yeah. I mean like right now, like, okay, I make over a million dollars a year, well over a million dollars a year of revenue off of YouTube, right? Just YouTube leads coming in and, and whatever, you know? So yeah, I'm doing, but what people don't realize is Look, I've been doing YouTube hard, creating insane and thousands of videos, thousands of, you know, content out there for, you know, shit, eight years now, you know, so I built up massive momentum 
And, and, you know, I'm not telling people to not do these things because I don't want to create competitors for myself. No, go do these things, but let's deal in realities and understand that it's going to take about a year of that consistent action, consistent work, day in and day out, pushing out content before that momentum builds up before you start seeing consistent business. So we got to put things into context, you know, just like, you know, when people hear, oh, well, Josh, you closed 48 deals your first year and they go out there and compare themselves to me. And I'm like, yeah, but look, let's put this in the context. I was 23 years old. I was not married. I did not have kids. I could work for him to midnight. And I did. Yeah. Right now. Okay. Now today at 42 years old, married three young kids. I'm not willing to be an absentee father. You know, so my first year today might have looked more like, I don't know, 24, 36 deals. Wouldn't it look like 48 probably? You know, I don't know. I'm not, you know, right. Um, um, you know, that that's theory, you know, um, but we got to put things into context, right? Okay. So it's a year of offense and not just, it's probably going to be offense for a long time to come here. Okay. So then from there, we got to make sure that you have the right offensive strategies in place. We're going out to the people with the most pain to go out there, have the most urgency. So strategy, strategy is your overall effective plan. Because otherwise, like there's no shortage of people that I meet and talk with that are going out there and they're, they're working hard and they're grinding, but they're struggling to even sell a house a, a week or I mean, even a house a month sometimes. I mean, I meet people at times that are working 40, 50, 60 hours a week that are struggling to close a house a month. And I start, I'm like, dude, like you should be a house a month shouldn't take you more than 20 hours a week. Like that should, you should be very part time closing a house a month. Yeah. Right. And, and that's not a dig at them. It's just, we, they're just, they're have the wrong strategy. Yeah. Right. It's like they're going to the gym every single day, all day long, but they haven't adjusted their calories. So it's just combating itself. It's like, I don't care how hard you sprint. If you're sprinting each chase in the sunset, you're never going to see it. So got to make sure that you have the right strategy in place. Then number two, you got to make sure your process is dialed in. So process is just, okay, when am I following up? How frequently am I following up? You know, which ways am I following up? Like you got to understand timeline and you got to make sure that you have the right process to maximize and optimize conversions per different lead source, per different strategy that you're going after. The third component is you got to dial in your skill set. Skill set is how good we are at doing the thing that we are doing. Look, you can be going after any one of these niches that I told you today, but if you don't not exactly know what to say, when to say it, how to say it, the right tonality, the right preframes, the right reframes, you know, how to identify the true objection core concerns and, and unpack those and keep the conversation moving forward and get that appointment set and you know, go out there and convert those appointments. Like you need to acquire those right skill sets. So we got, you know, your strategy, process, skill set. If you do not dial those three things in, like, no matter what you're doing with any of these things we covered today, you're going to experience resistance. So make sure that you dial these three things in, yo. Know, and if you do, you will 100% murder and crush it. Okay. So I want to end it with this. So again, if you are struggling in your business or maybe you're, maybe you're doing okay, you know, it's just not, you're just not growing at the path that you want your business to grow at. And you do not know exactly what you need to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go. I want to invite you to schedule a 100% free, 100% zero pressure coaching call with me personally. It's going to be a Zoom call with just me and you, right? We're going to break down where your business is at, what your 12-month goals are, what your long-term goals are. Really important to understand, like, for us to break those down. And, and if you don't know your long-term goals, I will help you get some clarity on those. You know, but then that way we can start then based on that, making sure that you are making the moves today that are getting you one step closer, you know, year in and year out to accomplishing your long-term goals. You know, then from there, we're going to break down what you are currently doing inside your business, what your biggest obstacles are that you're experiencing that's prohibiting you from taking the actions that you need to take. Then from there, I'm going to map through and walk you through what my recommended strategy is to get you from where you're at to where you want to go. You will not leave this free coaching call with not knowing exactly what you need to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go in the quickest, most effective, efficient, profitable manner. So I promise you this will be extremely powerful. It's a one hour long, 100% free, zero pressure coaching call with me personally. If you want to schedule this, go to www.zoom. I'm sorry, www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. Now, full disclosure. Now, if you're watching or listening to this, if you just scroll below, there'll be a link too. I should say that too. Um, um, but full disclosure, we're going to spend about 50 minutes going through all of that. And again, I will make sure before that 50 minutes up, you know exactly what you need to do. Then I'm going to spend a few minutes going through what my coaching program entails, seeing if it's a possible fit for you. And look, if it is cool, if not, that's okay too. Everything I do, zero pressure. Yeah, my word, I'm not going to high pressure you or you know, you know, try to get you to whip out a credit card or 
you know, doing that high pressure bullshit sales tactics. Not my style. Look, here's what it is. It's for you. Cool. If not, that's okay too. We can still be friends. I promise you that this coaching call will be massively effective, massively beneficial. You will not leave this call with not knowing exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go. So if you are struggling, it's like, I'm throwing you the lifeline, man. Like you're drowning in quicksand right now. I'm throwing you the rope. Just grab it. I'll pull you out. I promise you, I got your back. I got you covered regardless of what your situation is. I got you covered 100%. I will make sure you know what to do and eliminate all that confusion, all that guesswork so you can go out there and crush your goals. But I can't force you to grab the rope so I can pull you out. So you got to grab the rope so I can pull you out. So if you want to do that, if you want to grab the rope, go to www.gstmode.com forward slash Zoom call. Only thing I ask, so if you schedule this, I'm going to pour into you. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be five minutes early and I'm going to pour into you and I'm going to make sure that you are rocking and rolling. I just ask that you show up, right? And I'd ask too that you show up on time. <laughs> All right. If you want to jump off five minutes early, I'll be there early. Um, but I will be there five minutes early. So if you're like three minutes late, you've kept me waiting there eight minutes and, you know, and, and whatever, you know, right. But just, okay, just show up, show up on time. Um, if you need to reschedule, um, that's okay. You can get a reschedule link with all of that. I get that. Life comes up. Life life gets in the way and, and things come up. So cool. You have a reschedule link where you can reschedule um, and, and, and rebook that date if something conflicts or something comes up. But just don't know show me. If you know show me and you disrespect my time in that way, because I'm going to take time away from my business, time away from my family, time away from my life to help you. Um, but if you know show me, I'm not going to allow you to book another one. Right. So I'm going to, you know, save your name. I'll know it. Try to book another one. I'm going to cancel that. So don't know who show me. You can reschedule. Just don't know show me. Right. So I respect your time. Ask the same in, in return, which I think is fair. Right. So anyway, I hope that you found this uh, uh, helpful and beneficial. Keep crushing it. Go dominate. And we will talk to you soon. Peace.